Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, we're, this is a recording of the Creatives Roundtable. It's an example of how our moderating uh, sessions go. And we have, my name is Nancy Russo. I run the Creatives Roundtable. I'm also a graphic designer with 33 years of experience. Wendy? Hi, my name is Wendy Wood, and I'm the creative force behind Wendy Wood Design. I'm based out of San Carlos, California, just below San Francisco. Crystal? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, Crystal Reynolds. I'm based out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, I run, I've been running uh, Crystal Inc. Uh, for 20 years, and I focus on uh, self-publishing and publication design. Deb? My name is Deb Doolin. I'm the creative director of Doolin Design. Uh, we are a virtual team and branding studio based out of Maryland, just south of Baltimore. Um, we've been in business about a little more than 10 years, and we work with a lot of marketing departments who need design assistance. Great. Paula? Hi, everyone. I'm Paula Motshaw, based in Foster, Rhode Island, which is right near the Connecticut border. And I've been in business since 2011 and focusing on print and web design. Great. So why don't we do in the same order in which we just introduced ourselves, just tell us um, how your goals are going for the month and then we'll see if there are any questions about that. So we just had our, our call last uh, week and um, I, Finally met a long-term goal with the, I've been a member for two years and met a long-term goal of um, setting up and hiring uh, my first contractor in my business. Um, and so I've onboarded them, I've updated contracts with them and that started this week and it's going really well. She's working out great. We've had a couple of calls. Um, so I'm really thrilled about that. And um, definitely, you know, feel like I'm moving forward. So is this somebody that you can meet with if you need to? Are they local enough or are they just totally away? They are. She is local. She is in, she's in Oakland, um, which is across the bay from me. We could meet if we needed to, um, but I plan on working with her virtually. Um, and I have another person that is actually in the same town that um, her contract with the big clients running out at the end of the month. So she might be available to me too. So Great. Great. Um, anyone have any questions for Wendy? No? Okay, Crystal, do you want to tell us what you've been up to? Um, my overall goal for this, this term is really to update my uh, marketing skills and strategies. So for this month, um, I did do my blog post on uh, my self-published book, The Foldings. Woo! And I actually did a second one. So I've done two in a row, which is great. On my list, I also had uh, on my list to do, I bought a Udemy course on Google AdWords just to kind of get some insight on how it works. Um, <laughs> it's 30 plus hours and I'm halfway through section one of 50. So it's obviously not gonna be a monthly goal, <laughs> but one I just sort of pushed through. And aligning with that, um, I'm such a visual person and for me to try That's to help right me out of your marketing. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I'm a visual person. Trying to fix a lock in here. <laughs> so I'm a visual person, and um, I wanted to, for me, marketing, how does it look? So I've been trying to figure out a spreadsheet or some type of template. So I did find something on Evernote, which seemed to have a lot of the categories I was looking at. So that's a tick. So I'm sort of on my way um, for that. Anyone have any questions of Crystal? Yeah, how do you like the Udemy course so far? Um, well, I think because it's split up into little pieces, uh, the one, it's uh, the first time I've actually used it and, um, it's pretty, I mean, it's good to follow through, um, and they do have attachments and stuff that you can kind of go through. So, so far it's, it's fine. I mean, I've, I've tried like lynda.com and I've tried a, a bunch of other courses, so I don't really see too much of a difference. I was actually doing one, um, in, uh, on Skillshare on Google AdWords, but I ended up just emailing Nadine and picking her brain a little bit because she's <laughs> done them and they've been yeah. pretty successful for her. Yeah. yeah, this one's pretty detailed into the actual like step by step and then you really, I think it'll be great because I'll actually have a full understanding of how it works. And they will provide some code, which apparently helps you as well down the road. So. Oh, okay. That's cool. Do you think that you could share in the chat what the link to that one is? For that course, yeah, I can look that yeah, up. That would be great. Anyone else have any questions? 
And you find, like, I've tried to take those AdWord courses and I just glaze over. Like, you feel like the, the way that this is presented, you are, like, engaged in it. You, like, you, you're liking it. Um, I think this guy, he's done a pretty good job of piecemealing it. And he's like, don't try and do it all at once. Literally just do something, finish it, try it out, and come back, which I think is helpful. And they haven't been longer than seven or eight minutes per kind of little session. So That's good. And when you're doing your promoting of your company, are you thinking of like making a little book that you could send someone since you, your whole spiel? Yeah, I'm print, right? So that's always sort of been in my wheelhouse, but I've always been hiccuped by it. Um, content, content is hard. I can design it. I'm used to people giving me everything <laughs> and then I make it together. So it's hard to do it all together. But that, yeah, that's one of the things the direct mail piece and kind of making direct contacts is helpful. Like I said, I've been working with an independent publishing association here in town, going to their workshops. It's great. Like I've been, I've been meeting local authors and uh, it's amazing how people just want to come by, pick up my cards. So yeah, what about using those great quotes on Instagram? What if you did like a little mini book about quotes and that's an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like some sort of content. I want to key in who I'm working with is someone with amazing messages to share. Um, not just everybody, right? I want to kind of make a difference. So that's where those quotes are coming from too. Yeah. And they're starting to tie into my creative warnings talk next month oh, okay. <laughs> in my research. <laughs> and there are, there are some um, online uh, publisher of books that um, I think it's actually a photo place, but they offer you one free book a month and if you, I could find it. But if you, okay. If you, you know, were to print one free book a month and say that once a month I'm going to send this book to someone, um, that would be nice free printed promotion for you. Oh, that's kind of cool too. Yeah. I've been actually with my blog posts. So far the author has been giving me a copy with a signed copy, but I've mm -hmm. been purchasing one on Amazon for myself just to see how the process works. Right. And um, so in my blog post, if you comment, then I'll do a draw and I'll give away a book too. Okay. And what's that book that you're giving away? Uh, well, right now it's um, The Foldings. Okay. And then the next one I just did a blog post was Slim Island. So okay. Just, uh, yeah. So I have a, I'll have those two. So, so yeah, I try to just kind of get some interaction in that tactile print. Um, it's kind of fun. Cool. Very cool. How about you, Deb? Um, so my focus for this term has been... Um, it's making time to do all the little things you need to do to build your business. Um, I kind of let that slip a lot last term. And so I was kind of feeling the repercussions of it. So um, my goal is to build, redesign my website. I feel like I have a pretty good foundation, but some of the positioning and some of the messaging needs to adjust as my business has grown. So um, I really just had to start carving out time and making certain mornings the time that I'm just going to dedicate to it. So since the beginning of January, I've been blocking those thing, those sections like three days a week on my calendar. And it's, uh, it's been working. I, I sit down first thing in the morning, I get that taken care of. Um, I may not always do, you know, the LinkedIn follow up. I might work on my website copy instead, but at least I'm getting in the habit of working on things other than being in the trenches for my business. So this past month, um, I was refining the messaging. I, I feel like I have a pretty good core. I just needed to adjust things a little bit. And, um, even since we last chatted about it, I've really just, I feel like I'm a little bit more dialed in on certain things and clarifying some things that, um, on how I want to position my business in 2018. And are you doing it with, are you going to, um, do case studies or are you going to, um, do a full portfolio? What, what, what's your decision on that? I'm going more of the, the show don't tell approach this time. Um, I, I didn't hear that. I, I'm going more of a show first and then tell or show okay. don't tell. So I want to have more prominence on my portfolio. Um, people tend to respond more to visuals when I talk to prospective clients. I, I do always have little blurbs about it um, and testimonials when I, when I do receive them. So um, yeah, I just want to have more, more focus on the portfolio itself. I already have a blog that's in a pretty good spot that positions me in the way I want to be positioned to my clients. Okay, great. Does anyone else have any questions for Deb? No? You ready to go, Paula? I am. Great. 
at the end of last year, Jenny had talked about an exercise that she used to do, and I don't, I forget how she referred to it, but you use post-its and you write down everything that you want to accomplish and then you plug them into different months throughout the year. And I went through that exercise in December and I was able to plug things in. Similar to Crystal, I have a focus on marketing this term in the creatives roundtable. And what this has helped this process helped me to do was have a sense of okay, here's what I need to accomplish in January. And so when I attend the creatives roundtable meetings, I have a sense of okay, this is what I think I want to do. And Nancy and the group members help me to hone that and specifically say, okay, this is what I need to do for next time. So for January, I wanted to follow up with my contacts from the holiday card I sent, which I did. And I was able to update my Google My Business postings. I wrote six very short articles that are focused on my business and, and the work that I like to do. So now I just got an email from Google saying, your post is about to expire. So now I have to go in and update it, but luckily I have those posts to, to update it. So for my goals this month, um, I'm doing pretty well. That's great. And with those writing the posts ahead of time, which is great, is great because I know personally that when mine comes up, when I get the reminder that it's going to expire, I end up looking at what, what the statistics are on which ones have been open the most, and I just copy and paste that. <laughs> and I think preparing like that is a much better idea. <laughs> Anyone have any questions or comments? Can you share your Google My Business in the chat so we can see uh, what you're doing? I'm not ready sure. to add the Google, but, <laughs> <laughs> but a mix of things I already have to, I need to do, but I, I, you know, put it on the back burner. It's, it's sitting there. Thanks to Nancy and her. And my nonstop bugging everyone about it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not ready yet, but maybe later. It's really been successful for me, but it, I think it also just depends on what you have, how you position yourself in it. Um, and, um, but that's like any social media. So anyone else have any questions about that? So while, while Paula is putting that up, um, I'm going to start on one of the hot topics that I have, which is how often should you update your portfolio? Um, and I'm just really talking about the visual portion of your portfolio. So if you're like myself and Deb, You've been updating your website for a long time, but in the meanwhile, you don't update any of your work. I don't know if you did, Deb. I know I didn't. Um, but um, so I started looking into how often you should um, look into it. And there was an art buyer at J. Walter Thompson who said that she notices when portfolio sites haven't been edited, especially if it's a small, tightly edited body of work. Now, I personally have a larger body of work because I don't do case studies, but I know Wendy has a case study site, so she has less. Um, and they said it's important to show a consistent vision and that you are consistently in, uh, constantly evolving your work. So how do you guys feel about that? What are, what are your update policies or practices? Speak up. Uh, I don't actually, my, my portfolio site is just a gallery of images and I mm -hmm. haven't really updated it. I've been focusing more on my blog and focusing on more of a content related to what the project was and then giving some info. Um, so I'm not the best one <laughs> as far as kind of updating. But does your blog have recent work on it? Yeah, like that's the thing. That's where I'll post my recent work in the blog and I'll actually make a category of portfolio. Um, so I can always share that, I guess, as a tag. But as far as the visuals, I just, I think I get too caught up in how to photograph and how to make it look all pretty. Um, I know myself, I just sort of skim through things. Um, but as long as there's a place where someone can kind of feel for what your style of work is. And I think it is important um, to show a range as well. Um, you could do posts about before and after. Like I just sent out, I did a, a, a proposal for Roller Derby Canada. And I'm like, I haven't done any, like I used to do Dino's Athletics University um, designs, pro event programs and stuff like that. Um, but that was years ago. So. 
it's it kind of shows a before and after, you know, some more current versus related. Yeah. That's good. Anyone else? Shows a range. So I tend to wait on adding the portfolio piece until I have a, like a set. So sometimes I'll get, you know, a, a business that wants a rebrand. So it'll be the logo and a couple, you know, creative materials. And I like showing the whole thing because a lot of what I'm targeting is long-term relationships with customers. So I don't just want to show I do a one-off letterhead or a one-off PowerPoint. I want to show that I've cultivated this over time. Um, it tends to, I tend to have a bit longer lead time between happy client to being on the website because sometimes those things take, you know, a few weeks to months to, to get to completion. Right. Um, my, my in between what I've been doing sometimes is doing um, different things on Instagram. Um, you know, I, I don't obviously have a huge following on Instagram, but anytime I do sketches or any type of work in progress, like it seems to generate a lot of interest. I found that people are fascinated that I still pencil draw things or sketch things out. They like to see, and I tend to wait until the client has revealed it themselves so they still get the big surprise. Um, so I'll, I'll do almost little things in between, whereas if the website's not updated, I'll, I'll tease certain things like signage went up on this project or something else, but the final piece hasn't been added to the website yet. And are you doing it in other places besides Instagram or just Instagram? Um, you know, for portfolio, I haven't found another site that's very good at Facebook. Even before the algorithm changed, I never got a lot of traction. That would kind of cherry pick that. Um, LinkedIn doesn't seem to be a good place for a portfolio. Actually, I think with LinkedIn, if you were to um, do the same types of things on a weekly basis and tag it with the, with the correct hashtags, you would see your um, numbers go up quite a bit. Really? Yes. I'll look into that. I've been actually doing every Wednesday posts, and I don't really know that this number could be correct, but it said that I'm up 400%. Are you doing that on your business page or your personal profile? I'm doing it on my personal profile. And what's up 40%? Engagement? 400% 400 it said, engagement, yeah. So, you know, that came from me probably not posting anything in a couple of months to me deciding <laughs> after we had the LinkedIn talk that I was going to start posting regularly um, as well as follow people and, you know, mention them in the, um, any comments with the, at Wendy Wood, at Deb Doon, whatever, you know, that type of thing. So that has really helped engage also in conversations with people. So, but I would, I would think that something in progress like that, Deb, would be fantastic on LinkedIn, and that's your marketplace. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah let me look into that some more. Thank you. And I literally have a reminder on my calendar on Wednesdays to post, which is similar to what you're doing on your um, hours to get your website done. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have something on this? I, I just felt like I am, um, you know, I, it's two, two, I launched my site two years ago and I felt like, oh, I just relaunched it and I just realized this January, I'm like, oh, it's been two years and I haven't added another portfolio <laughs> piece. So, um, I, and I do case studies and I have these great clients that I need to showcase. Like I did a lot of work for Shutterfly last year that I can do a really fantastic case study about how I helped them. And, um, and also I'm starting to work with, um, this 3d company called carbon that is growing like crazy. So, um, they've, they've given me some significant work and will continue to do so. So I want to add them as well. Um, at least start the process, you know, writing, you know, how I'm helping them. Cause, uh, it, it everything's just going by so fast with the work so it's on my list to do before the end of this term at least have and one of them do you think you'll do one at a time or and will you replace or will you add i i want i think i want to replace one because the work feels a little dated now and i'm not working with them anymore mm -hmm. um so uh right now i think i will add one at least and um so, and ideally I'd like to be doing more work in progress and adding to my blog. I just, I, I'm hoping that as I start adding contractors, it's going to free more time to do kind of some of the, the higher level things that I want to do. So. Well, great. Anyone else? No? Okay. So um, just to let you know, to end that Google ranks sites with um, regularly updated content higher. So, that could be a blog post that could be you know changing pretty much anything but they um they definitely rank them higher um so 
I'm going to ask one more question and then we can end this because I do appreciate everybody's time. Um, so the, the question is when you're, when you're doing any of your postings or you're doing your, whether it's Instagram, your website, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, whose content, um, whose attention do you seek on this content? Do you know whose attention you seek? Anyone? Well, I, for me, like a lot of some of my, some of my content I've focused on publishing. I've used Q that feeds into my buffer and I've chosen authors and publishing and self-publishing. So um, I definitely do some of that um, and I make a point of not sharing too much um, of stuff like branding because I'm good at it, but it's not something I want to do. So I try not to share that kind of, kind of content. But as far as who I want to reach, it's publishers and it's people with something kind of to say and it matters, I guess. And so when you're doing that, are you looking at um, what is the problem that that market has that you can solve? Um, that, that is something that I haven't been consciously doing. <laughs> but definitely when I do share content, it is usually content that does solve a problem. Um, so, and some of the blog posts I've been doing that I try to share on myself and my story is just sort of things that I've learned along the way. Um, Which is a great way to... to share that yeah yeah so anyone else Who's not, I, I i've been you know um my marketing i do like mostly post through instagram that goes to my personal facebook feed and it's been all my artwork and sketching and those kind of things it's not quite directly related to the design business but that marketing effort has reached people that i know um and is a good reminder without being having a lot of sales you know feel to it um and it, it's just been nice it's gotten me a lot of work um and it's also i feel like it's um it, it, like this is this is kind of who i am and who i offer and it kind of attracts like-minded people doing that um so i don't know people that appreciate art and, and that thought the thought process behind it that's great i think that thought process and deb's you know thought process of showing the, the steps along the way is something that people really relate to. They, they do. I find that, um, you know, it's like, oh, I can see, like, like, I get a lot of interaction with that, whereas, like, the design work I post, I don't seem to get a lot of interaction with. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, you know, it still reminds me that I'm in an art and creative field, and so it seems to be working. So Great. Anyone else? When I write something, whether it be for an article on LinkedIn or Google My Business, it's usually for, say, a marketing director type person or a small business owner type person, the type of people who usually reach out to me. And how do you, how do you phrase something so that those are the people that you're attracting? Like what's a typical um, like headline that you would use? <sighs> Like for annual, annual, I forget the headline though. So I usually try to do a, a catchy headline and not a salesy headline. But it's just a short blurb, and it's I frame it in a way where if if they want to do it themselves, they could, but they could also hire me if if they're if they're too busy to do it. But I, I try to put myself in their seat um, because years ago I was a, a I was on a marketing director at a healthcare nonprofit. So I kind of feel their, feel their pain and some of what the, what's going on with them. So I try to think about that when I'm creating something. And when I'm, a, when I'm on LinkedIn, if I'm going to comment on something, I think about what kind of comment I would make and try to make a, a, a contribution instead of just liking something. One thing that I, I really need to do though, and I think Deb has done it, is to carve out a specific time to actually sit and do this stuff instead of saying, oh, I have some free time now and be more proactive ab about that. So maybe Who that'll be one of my- that? Who else Pardon? does that besides Deb? What's that? <laughs> who, who else actually carves out your marketing time? Anyone? I, I've started carving out painting time because I, I feel like um, I, I, that's one of the reasons why I've like, I was kind of had to hire someone to help me um, because I can't, myself take on any more work. So if I market myself and get more work, there was no way I can take it on. Um, but the, the reason, one of the reasons why I want to 
have people helping me is so that I can paint and explore what that looks like and how it evolves into my business. Um, so, which is part of the marketing, which I put post a lot. So Great. I have carved out some time. At least I get in my studio twice a week. So that's good. That's good. I, I tend to in the mornings. That's kind of when I check email and check feeds. That's when I'll just sort of, if I see something we're sharing, <clears throat> that's the time I carve out in the day to kind of share and go. Um, I'll go on Spark and create some of those memes that I quotes that I do on Instagram and I'll create them on the go. And then when I'm kind of throughout the day, if I think about it, oh, here's a good point. I don't know. I'll go in and I'll just add it to my Instagram feed. So it's kind of like a little bit of not defined, you know, carb time, but I'm aware of it. And when I think of it, I just sort of pop in and do what I can. Great. Well, I want to thank everybody for doing this promo recording with me. Um, and we will see you guys in a few weeks on our regular calls. Take care. Sounds good. You too, Nancy. Bye. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you.